guys, just a quicker one today. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the benefits of having an oxygen saturation monitor. So when we're going through our exercise intensity and trying to figure out how, much, how hard we should do the exercise sessions, we have to consider two things. One, whether we're doing it enough to get benefit out of it. And I mean, some of these does come down to comfort as well, but whether we have, we're doing it enough to get benefit out of it. So that's one thing. And then is it actually safe for you to do it that way? And that's a big concern because we want to make sure whatever we're doing, it's, it's safe for you. So there's two method, methods that we use primarily to try and figure out what exercise intensity you should do. One is doing the RPE, so your rate of perceived exertion. So that's that one to 10 scale and we generally aim for like a three to four, so lightly puffing. Now this is a, a, a good way if you don't have any um, other method, but it's not an exact science. So tends to, what we tend to find is that people tend to exercise a little bit under what they could be exercising at. So if you feel comfortable to exercise at a little bit of a higher intensity, that's where I'd suggest you get an oxygen saturation monitor. So the little oxygen saturation monitor, you can turn on and pop that on your finger. And now I can see exactly what's happening inside my body. So what, I, what I'm looking for here, I can put that on while I do exercise and I can start to see, okay, well, how much is my exercise intensity actually affecting my uh, oxygen saturation? And that's telling you how hard your lungs are working and how hard you can actually exercise. So you might be surprised to find that you can exercise a little bit more intense, or you might find that that's, you know, maybe you, you can't, maybe you can only exercise with that lightly puffing. But with this, you know exactly where you're up to. So generally you'll start at about 97, 98%. So mine actually says 98% at the moment. Sorry for the reflection. Uh, and generally they'll, they'll also say what your heart rate is as well. So this one says 98% and 74 for my heart rate. So you'll start off like that. You'll start to exercise and you'll find that the, the oxygen saturation starts to come down and down and down a little bit more each, with each minute of exercise that you're doing. When you have a rest, it might come straight back up. Um, particularly for those of you that have more of emphysema, more of that fibrotic lung, um, you'll find that the, the um, saturation will drop. Uh, for other type of lung conditions, like your more um, congestive chronic bronchitis, uh, you might find that it tends to stay up a little bit higher. So when you're exercising, you can monitor this, you can see what's happening with your uh, your oxygen saturation and then you can monitor your exercise accordingly. So I might be doing some step ups for example and I'm walking away there and then I find after about two minutes my oxygen saturation is down to about 88%. And this is a general benchmark that we sort of say anything below that we need to stop and have a rest. So after two minutes my oxygen saturation hits 88%. I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to have a little rest. So we just want to make sure that you, you can support yourself, either hands on the, hands on the um, knees and then taking nice deep breaths. And you can use your purse lip breathing as well. So breathing in, breathing out and pursing the lips, breathing in. And you can also do this against the wall, just having your, excuse me, while I move back a little bit. So you can do that against the wall, just supporting yourself there, not doing a plank or anything, but just supporting yourself. In my experience, a lot of people do want to sit down so that's perfectly fine as well. The main thing is that you have a rest, 
get your oxygen saturation back up, um, back into the 90s, at least above 95, 96, and then you can keep going. All right, so you can keep going, get it back up, try again, you'll find it'll drop again, have a rest and get back, get, um, have a rest and get it back up into those 90s again. So like I said, this allows you that precise way of actually measuring oxygen saturation so you know exactly how much you can actually do. So you know you're doing the most you can to improve your lungs uh, without putting yourself in danger and going to a dangerously low level of oxygen saturation. So I definitely recommend um, picking up one of these. They vary in price between about $60 to $100. Uh, they have some at places like Chemist Warehouse and you can buy them online as well. Um, you don't need a fancy one, you just need a basic one that works uh, to measure oxygen saturation. So guys, hope that, hopefully that's helpful uh, and if you uh, feel like that, that's something you would like to get, then yeah, like I said, I'd recommend doing that and you can give it a go at home and monitor your oxygen saturation to make sure you're getting the most out of your exercise. Alright guys, that's it for today. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know uh, in the comment section below. Otherwise, I shall catch up with you next time.